Hi, y'all. Let's chat a little bit about some exciting things that have happened to me in the last week or two. So, um, I am, uh, if you watch my Twitter feed or watch my videos, which I presume some of you do occasionally, you'll know that uh, from time to time I tend to take on people who say shit about science. Uh, I do this more on Twitter because it shows up more there on Twitter now than it does on, on uh, YouTube, and I try to do it in the forum where it, where it uh, arises. So, I've been doing this for, I don't know, 10, 12 years now, and I occasionally get people who disagree with science, who claim to be totally in support of science while uh, molesting it the entire time. And it uh, is often the case today that the people who are molesting it at the moment were people who formerly were claiming to be defending it against the molestations caused by, say, uh, creationists. It is uh, very interesting to watch. It's sad, but amusing, so there you go. And I, I had a run-in with a a guy who's uh, somewhat popular, he's well known for his uh, v religious views and for allegedly defending science, and it's Dark Matter 2525, who has thrown it out the window, uh, and has uh, one of the heuristics I use in the world to, to see the strength, to gauge what it is that uh, people I'm disagreeing with think about the strength of their positions, is when they start bringing up, uh, even if subtly, start bringing up things related to violence. It's a dead giveaway that they know they're cornered and they're, they're trying to find something to fight back with. And uh, Dark Matter 2525 actually did that. And then when I said, violence, really, he said, oh, don't play the victim. Now, I've had three threats in the last week. One in real life with some whack job in, of in the Seattle area talking about he's going to whack, uh, whack people with his, the machete he didn't actually have, all the white people around him. And I thought, well... Uh, all these people with their imaginary guns will be able to defend themselves well against this guy's imaginary machete, but if he happens to have a real one tucked away somewhere, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I got everybody's back. So uh, that lasted for a couple of minutes, then he went on to talk about blue chip, uh, blue chip stocks and the evil of corporations, and uh, we all smiled nicely, gave him a wide berth, and went about our way, uh, getting coffee or whatever. So uh, I didn't take that one particularly seriously. I don't take any of the ones I get online particularly seriously even when they're meant to be taken seriously, like one from a former fan turned <laughs> left-wing anarchist who's uh, offered me the, the sad reality that one day he'll have to face me on the battlefield during the Civil War. All right, fair enough. And then there was Dark Matter 2525, who was subtler, uh, who was very subtle, and in fact uh, so subtle that you can actually plausibly, to people who want to believe you're doing the right thing, Tonight, and I'm very. And then he says, "You're, you're, you're a cop. You should know what threats look like." You're right, buddy. I, I do know what they look like, and I also happen to know, uh, not simply because I used to be a cop, but because I grew up as a white guy in the South with a lot of black people, and I happen to live for a time in an area that is uh, the state capital of the KKK. I've seen it in action, and uh, personally, plus I've studied it in law enforcement. Uh, the Mafia uses uh, the same tactic you use. It's the, boy, it'd be really bad. It'd be terrible for you. It'd be horrible. Can't imagine. Oh, God, how much would it feel if your house burned down, sir, and your family was killed? That would be terrible. I hope it doesn't happen to you. That's the stating what's, what would be terrible to have happen to you and then failing to complete the copula by then denying that, uh, by just leaving the copula uncompleted, you know, which would be to say, and that's why we're going to do it to you. They just say, oh, it'd be terrible. Terrible, 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 can't, oh my god, I hope it doesn't happen. Be very sad for you, we might even go to your funeral. Alright, so that's one way to do it. Another way uh, is you can use, uh, well, I don't know how people are in their vernacular with respect to racism and the Klan and blacks and whatnot in America, so, uh, coon is a, is a word that's used to refer to black people because uh, lots of white people, even in the South these days, don't say nigger to black people's faces because then it's very obvious. And you have no deniability if you go up and say, boy, I'd like to go nigger hunting. You can't get away with that anymore. So now they go coon hunting, which has two uses. One of which is just going out to hunt raccoons. It happens. And the other is to go out and hunt black folks. And when someone says they're going coon hunting, you don't really know which they might be talking about, so they always have plausible deniability. Except that the people who really want to go hunt raccoons uh, or have coon dogs, things of that nature, want to go do that real activity, the real hunting, the real sportsman thing, don't tend to find a group of black people to go advise of their intention to go coon hunting. Uh, whereas the people who want to intimidate blacks tend to say it in the presence of 
black people uh, in some weird kind of context. Uh, it's very obvious to spot it when you're there, but as far as proving beyond reasonable doubt that there's intimidation or a threat going on, it'd be very difficult. So Dark Matter 25, 25's uh, confusion and uh, beef with me is about the ABAs having said something about a woman who is a transgendered, claims to be a trans man, that is to say, claims to be a woman who is now a man, uh, is that trans men are real men. And I dispute this. In fact, they are not only not real men, as if there are other kinds of men, they are just not men at all. And uh, the, well, what makes a man, is not the metaphysical question of uh, what attributes make a good man, that kind of question, the philosophical question, it's the biological question. What is a man? Very simple. It's easy as pie to explain. Man, adult, human, male. If it's not adult, human, and male, it is not a man. It's something else. Whatever else it is, more power to it, her, him, it, whatever, could be an animal, could be human, could be a tree, whatever. If it does not, if it, if it is not adult, human, male, not a man, and adding other things onto it doesn't, it, well, it's unnecessary, and I refuse to cooperate in that, particularly when it's being uh, rammed down my throat. I'm not trying to be funny there. We already have words for humans of all different types of descriptions that aren't adult, human, and male. We don't need to confect new ones from rearranging the old ones. Uh, you can do it if you'd like, but my the extent to which I'm going to cooperate is, uh, well, it's limited in all cases, but it's going to vary heavily on how much I like you. So, uh, I had a number of people who don't understand biology whining about uh, this and that and the other, and like just in the way that you navigate your world with imperfect heuristics of how to go about getting through the world, so too do we use those in science, one of which is in biology. A really good but imperfect way to determine male or female is drop trial and take a look. Penis, male, vagina, female. It's not perfect though. There are mistakes that will be made. Uh, most of us don't actually have to have people drop trial. We're about 95, 98% accurate. But when we drop trial, we're you, virtually, we're always right. I'm sorry, virtually right all the time. Virtually right all the time. Not actually right all the time because there are some abnormalities that make that difficult still. But having a penis and having a vagina is not the definition of male and female. That's a heuristic. It's not particularly logical. It need not be rational. It just needs to be useful. And that is this. Because the correspondence between being male and having this and being female and having that is very, very, very high. It's very predictive. It's very useful. The actual definition is not even the presence of certain genes. It's not the SRY gene. You can be male by, in different ways. There are many, many animals that have males that don't have human genetics. It may have escaped these people's notice. So biology actually defines it differently. Uh, for species that use gametic fusion to reproduce, which is what humans use, all mammals use gametic fusion. Uh, actually, I should... Anyway, all mammals do this. Certainly all humans do it. And so, therefore, the definition of male and female depends on gamete size. It's that simple. The, the uh, body type, which, when free of defect, will produce the larger gamete is female, and the one that produces, when free of defect, the smaller gamete is male. It's, it's that simple. No matter what cosmetics you do on the outside, if the way that you were born is of a type which, if without defect, and at the age of sexual maturity would produce the larger gamete, you're female. Else, male. And then you have the intersex cases where it's, uh, well, it seems to be, we'll do the best approximation we can and uh, hope for the best. It's not, it's, not the, uh, it's not a desirable way to do it, but it is actually quite difficult. And so people make their best guesses and hope for the best. It doesn't always work out. So in order to prove that, uh, that this isn't true, that it's absolutely false, that uh, I'm right about how science is done, that, that there is this new category of thing that simply must be taken account of, and these words must be used, and it's sufficient, blah, 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 all this gibberish nonsense, uh, propaganda. Uh, 
he sent me an ambiguous case, which is, of course, the way to do it. You say, well, there's ambiguity here, and if you can't do it 100% of the time, you're not talking science, sir, because science, as we all know, is meant to be perfect. Uh, we get perfect answers that are logically deducible, and there are never errors in science because science is always perfect. Of course not. Science is never perfect. We have no perfect models. There's not a single model of any kind in science that applies to anything that exists in the universe that is without error. A hundred percent of them have error. All right? The, in fact, a big study, a big field of study in science and engineering is error. Studying what is the, in fact, that's all statistics is, what is the difference between what the model says reality should be and what reality actually is? What is the residual phenomenon left unexplained by this model? All right? That's true of all scientific models and all mathematical models that attempt to model anything that happens in the physical universe. Period. They all are defective. So if you can point to an ambiguous case and say, well, there's something here that's different, blah, 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 go away, then you've just undone the last 500 years of scientific learning. Because we can know absolutely nothing about anything because there are ambiguous cases, the residual phenomenon problem, in 100% of the fields of science, in 100% of the models in the fields of science, in 100% of the mathematical models that attempt to say something about the real world. They are all defective. There are ambiguous cases in all of them. So then, uh, the ambiguous case he sends me is of a woman who has jacked herself up on performance-enhancing uh, substances of various kinds. And uh, he says, well, what, here, here's the, the, well, wouldn't it be nice to go coon hunting kind of thing? Or the, it'd be awfully terrible if your house got burned down there, Mr. Justicar. It'd be really sad if it happened. Mm. Hope it doesn't, wink. He sends me this picture. He says, now, when a, what if a woman, I'm sorry, what if a man like this, it was a woman, sorry, but he says, what if a trans man like this comes to your, your house and kicks your ass? What are you going to tell the cops uh, when, when this person walks off after beating you up? Was it a man or a woman that beat your ass? The first problem here is, of course, that uh, the specter of violence is being raised because he's getting progressively angrier. He got so angry that he, uh, uh, that he actually ran away and said, You're not even worth talking to! And follow! So that's how I know that he's, like, that desperate. He, he, he wants to argue a position, but he doesn't have the, uh, the intellectual heft to pull it off. And the reason for it is quite simple. There's nothing that supports the propositions he chooses to propose. Uh, they're purely emotionally based. They're uh, anti-scientific. And uh, he's able to get nowhere with the person who's, unlike most of his audience, actually trained in relevant subjects. But anyway, before getting butt hurt and flouncing, he raises the specter of violence. It's the aggressive bit here. And, uh, and then he wants to, to say that if this man were to beat me up, if this woman on steroids were to come kick my ass, I might have difficulty explaining to the cops who it is who had beaten my ass. And because I would have that difficulty, it is therefore completely meaningless. It's wrong to say that that is a, a woman, vagina notwithstanding. The capacity to reproduce, to, you know, to the production of larger, the larger gamete in a gametically fused reproductive species, completely irrelevant. It's based on... Whatever this woman decides to say that morning when she wakes up will be the science of the day. This is the science that I have to support, apparently, uh, because when they do it, it makes a phenomenon that is sufficiently different. You can notice a distinction, superficially at least, and ergo, a uh, bloody mess on my front steps it will prove it somehow. But even assuming that, uh, that this, this woman on steroids could kick my ass, which I, uh, of course, don't accept. And by the way, I, I mentioned this earlier. I don't take these seriously at all. I don't think that any woman, or any man for that matter, is actually going to show up to my door and beat my ass over this. Uh, but if one does try it, uh, <laughs> bring a body bag. Uh, no one no one comes into my house uh, without my permission and walks out on their own power, so long as I draw breath. Just FYI. Try it if you want. But anyway, so no dark matter. I don't think you're actually threatening to, to hire that particular uh, woman who's on steroids, I mean, she has roid rage, uh, and give her my address and then send her over here to whip my ass, or as what would uh, actually, in fact, in reality happen, send her over here to get her ass whipped. Uh, that is not what you're doing, but you are raising the specter of violence. You could have used another example, 
someone, a completely androgynous person, uh, just walking down the street. You could have said, what about that? But that's not how you, that's not the, the, the way you chose to go uh, because you're getting angry. And when people like you are losing and you're getting desperate and you want to resort to a case that's useful, for some reason, the aggression that you're starting to feel gets morphed and gets built into the example you want to use. And uh, that, that betrays your own emotional instability, your own emotional discomfort in the conversation, your own, that sense that you get is called confusion. Watch Richard Feynman's lectures and interviews. He'll talk about it. He'll help you through it. It's called confusion. That's the state in which scientists work day in and day out, confused about reality because it's hard, because you get the ambiguous cases. But uh, I appreciate that you're pissed off. I appreciate that you're butt hurt and you're finding it very frustrating to run up against a wall of science that you can't get around while claiming nevertheless to be doing something about science because your own particular reasons and emotional state. That alleged man, that woman, has uh, the, the tweet from the uh, ABA was talking about pregnant men and uh, men who menstruate. The number of pregnant men is exactly zero. It's the same number of men who menstruate. Not a single such one exists. Period. Uh, this one, this woman you sent me a picture of, uh, I don't know if, if she menstruates. I don't know if she can still get pregnant. But what I absolutely know is that uh, to the extent it is a, a trans man means that it is a woman who claims to be a man who has a certain gender identity they wish to, f to express, uh, whether or not other people accept it. And uh, that means they are of a body type which, without defect, whether genetic or uh, non-genetic, you could have a disease, you could have an injury, could be whatever it is, without that, uh, that defect, that deficiency in, in the form, would be the one that would produce the larger gamete and therefore is a female. And uh, uh, it is an adult human female. We have a word for adult human female, sir. It is called woman. I don't need new words for it. I know them perfectly well. Uh, I'm fully comfortable with women going around calling themselves whatever they want to. People do it all the time. So long as they don't trespass against science in my presence, I don't respond to it. The ABA made the mistake of talking about men who become pregnant. That's why I got in the conversation, and then you decided to take me on. And it is absolutely to your shame that uh, you're as disingenuous as you were in bringing up the specter of violence. And when I and all I said in response to that was really violence. I wasn't claiming to be a victim. I was pointing. I was trying. I was pointing out what the specter of the thing was you were you were bringing up, which you should not have done. Many other cases you could have used that didn't have the specter of violence. And because of my background, both growing up gay in the South and atheist in the South, seeing white racists in the South and how they talk to blacks, and studying organized crime and how they go around warning people in advance that they're about to get fucked up by saying, it would be terrible if this thing happened to you, and then magically the thing happens to them later that day. Ooh, well, who could have seen that coming? Complete mystery, but the one thing we know is the mafioso was totally not threatening it. It was actually just... He's psychic. They can predict with regularity which of these, these businesses will be set on fire after their windows are broken and which of their owners are going to be found wearing concrete galoshes in the bottom of the Hudson. It, they're, just, they're psychic is what it is. You are engaging in the same conduct. I'm not afraid. I know you don't. I, I am fully aware that you're not going to do this. Which is why I started off with saying, violence, really? And, but then you decided to, to double down on it. So that's the problem. I'm glad you're butthurt. You should be butthurt. You were saying stupid shit. Get over it. I might well not be worth talking to because you think it's unreasonable for me to molest science so that way it will serve you rather than keeping it pure so that way it will serve its actual purpose, which is advancing human knowledge. The invention of the word trans man does absolutely nothing but add confusion without a single corresponding addition to our knowledge of biology. All right? Happy if they want to use it. Let them do it all they want. Just don't make the mistake of molesting science in my presence. Because it is, I would think, obvious to everyone. You do it in my presence, you're going to get slapped down. I'm not going to pretend that the scientific gibberish 
that you talk in my presence is anything other than absolutely retarded. I don't care if you're my brother. I don't care if you're someone I'm dating. I don't care if you're my best friend. I don't care if you actually are a scientist who's talking gibberish. Do it in my presence, and we're going to have words. They did it in my presence. You made the retarded decision to defend their molestation of science, and then you got butt hurt. All right? Many happy returns on that. Have a great day.